So the dust has settled and AMD has officially revealed their initial Zen 4 AM5 lineup. By now, we've all had some time to digest the news. And well, I personally have also had some time to reach out to people at both AMD and Intel and pick their brains about how they're feeling about their competitiveness against each other, which I'm glad I took some time after the initial reactions on Broken Silicon to digest the information and think about really what AMD's doing here with their pricing and segmentation, because in some ways they're exposed and in other ways, I think they've got more advantages than a lot of people are giving them credit, which I have to say, I think some online commentators and especially some YouTube commentators should have taken some more time to think about the situation before shooting off their mouths. Truly, I feel like the Zen 4 reveal exposed how many people had already made up their minds before AMD made the performance and pricing official. I saw all of these quotes on Twitter and some discords of, you know, getting popcorn ready to dunk on AMD fanboys. And then all of these canned arguments came out from haters talking about how Zen 4 was doomed, despite AMD clearly not unveiling the information some of these haters thought they would and i also saw some weird arguments being made like the 7600x being a bad cpu relative to alder lake despite was hardware and box pointed out on twitter it is a 300 dollars cpu beating one of intel's flagships that often costs over 500 dollars in gaming Launching a $300 i9 killer is not bad or disappointing for anyone that isn't, well, again, just spouting a bunch of canned arguments that they probably should have adjusted after seeing the official information. No matter how you dice it, Zen 4 is a bigger uplift than what Zen 3 was. Zen 4 brings Zen 3-like single-threaded increases, if not higher depending on the SKU, over Zen 3 compared to Zen 3 over Zen 2. And it brings bigger than Zen 3 multi-threading increases, basically being a bigger than Zen 2 single-threading increase and at least as big as Zen 3 single-threading increase and a multi-threading increase that's in between what Zen 2 and Zen 3 brought over their previous generation. This isn't the biggest uplift AMD's brought overall gen over gen, but it's a pretty big uplift. All right, but now having said that, I do feel like while well, some people came off as pretty dumb trying to say Zen 4 was disappointing a few days ago, there's also this new AMD fanboy that's overcompensating for those people and making it sound like Raptor Lake has absolutely no chance, which I also think is wrong. Raptor Lake definitely at least has a chance to beat AMD overall in segmentation. But, well, a lot of it's going to depend on what Intel can afford, and I do mean that word specifically, afford to do against Zen 4, because, well, Intel's earnings haven't been stellar lately, and I think, I think it's a little premature to declare either AMD or Intel the overall winner for the consumer platforms this fall. And that's what I want to talk about today. In addition to updating you guys when some Intel products, including Fishhawk Falls, are launching, but first an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to pick from a series of templates that are each structured to cultivate a different type of website that then you yourself can tailor to your needs. Squarespace also offers powerful features like member areas that allows you to segment content that's sold to your followers, online stores for both physical and digital products, and SEO tools to track your business and help you make informed decisions on how best to grow it. Head to squarespace.com slash Moore's Law is Dead and use the offer code Moore's Law is Dead to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain clicking on this link and using this code greatly helps show support for this channel and it also helps you launch your next venture at a cheaper rate support moore's law z and your online presence with squarespace today all right so now i want to get right into it i want to get into breaking down why amd's likely priced their zen 4 products the way they have and what will make or break them from the raptor lake competition the basis of my overall point is anchored in a chart I put together comparing basically how much performance you're going to keep as you segment down both the Raptor Lake and Zen 4 product stacks. And most of the information came from a, a wonderful piece done by Wizard at Tech Power Up where he benchmarked just E cores in Alder Lake against combined E cores and P cores. Now, I compared his numbers to benchmarking at Puget Systems and Hardware Unboxed, and I found places where their numbers lined up really well. So, 
I'm still deciding to mostly use Wizard's numbers because I like the average CPU performance chart he did. It seemed like a good balance between a best and a worst case scenario when it comes to how good E cores are relative to P cores. And this isn't an, an important thing to balance here because, well, Raptor Lake brings higher single threaded performance than Alder Lake. But it brings a lot more multi-threading performance because it's doubling E cores and only bringing slightly improved P cores. So yeah, I believe that's most of what you need to know. I'm going to skip basically all of the math here because I've got bogged down in 10 minutes of reverse engineering each number in Excel before and I just, I don't think it helped. But what you need to know, what's important to know as I pull up this chart is that links are in the description and that I base the single threaded comparisons for Zen 4 products based on the numbers AMD revealed on August 29th themselves. And then I also made a couple of assumptions like the fact that I expect Intel single threading performance to suffer a little more down the product stacked as they segment parts because, well, that's what's happened with Alder Lake in every previous Intel generation compared to Zen. That's just what happens when you have a monolithic architecture being segmented against a chiplet architecture that has smaller chiplets on a more advanced node the performance is a bit more consistent in boosting with one versus the other but anyways let's get into this now the first thing to note on this chart is that zen 4 and raptor like are ordered roughly in terms of which skus will cost more than the others but i've also included rough single threading and multi-threading performance relative to the top chips and it comes with the assumption that the 13900k and 7950x will have roughly the same single threaded and multi-threaded performance and i want to be very clear that this comes directly from an intel source that i spoke to today that told me that after seeing amd's numbers on august 29th that they were a bit higher than intel's internal projections but not that much higher they're impressed but not surprised and that at the same time the i9's boost isn't quite as high for the stock performance that they will be selling as they expected a month ago so Really, and I got this from other people I talked to today as well, they really do expect the 7950X and 13900K to trade blows consistently. Yes, there will be some benchmarks where AMD wins and some where Intel wins in both single threading and multi-threading. But overall, you should think of these as very, very equivalent flagships. All right. So if we look at that and then we do what I told you, did again, links in the description for how I got to the numbers uh, for how much multi-threading and how much single-threading performance will be maintained down the product stack, you can see that, well, it seems to actually be roughly organized in order of how these things are probably going to be priced. The 7900X should do fine depending on how the 13700K is priced. It should have a bit higher single-threading performance and a bit higher multi-threading performance. And the 7700X will likely beat the i5 in gaming, although it will lose by a little bit in multi-threading and you know, there's just no way around it. Depending on how the i5 is priced, it looks like it's going to crush the 7600 x here and if the i5 did crush the 7600x and make the 7700x look very questionable that really wouldn't surprise me you know i predicted before alder lake came out that based on the numbers i had that alder lake's i5 was going to be a return to form for the i5 brand that that's really going to be the sku and alder lake's lineup that makes amd look a bit silly and it wouldn't surprise me if this happens again that intel's best winner in consumer competition is the i5 raptor lake just like it was with the i5 Alder Lake against Zen 3. But at the same time, I think a lot of people online who are saying the R5 and R7 models from Zen 4 are dead on arrival are being a bit premature. AMD isn't stupid or naive. They wouldn't price the R5 7600X and R7 7700X the way they did unless they had a compelling argument for, well, for consumers to pay those prices. And this is the argument I think they're going to make. I think what AMD is going to say is this. I'm not saying I agree with it, but what they'll say is, well, why do you pay $300 for a CPU? Look, if you pay over $600, you're probably using this for work. But why do you pay $300? It's probably for gaming, right? Well, look at their numbers against the i9-12900K. I think it's unlikely that the Raptor Lake i5 beats the 12900K by an appreciable amount that's better than the 7600X. I think at a minimum, the 7600X is going to tie the i5 in gaming. And, well, that's probably what you're buying those processors for is what AMD would say. And then they would also go, 
And you can upgrade it. You can upgrade it to Zen 4 X3D as soon as quarter one, as I, by the way, exclusively leaked last week before other people started saying the same thing. So AMD goes, look, if you get this $300 R5 product, you can just wait a quarter and then get insane Zen 4 X3D products or then wait another year and get Zen 5 or then wait another two or three years and get Zen 6. If you buy this i5, you're not going to be better at gaming now. You're not going to be able to upgrade it to future generations later. And frankly, you're taking a gamble on how well those e-cores will age. If you buy AMD, you know, every application is going to use all six cores well and you'll be able to upgrade it. I'm not saying I agree with AMD, but I do believe that's why AMD priced the R5 where it is. And the same argument basically goes for the 7700X. It just costs a little more. AMD would say, hey, it you know beats the i5 a little bit in gaming, and sure, it costs more for their roughly the same multi-threading performance, but you don't need to worry about if your applications use e-cores well or not. If you buy a 7700X, it's always going to get you good next-gen multi-threading performance. And you know what? You don't need to worry about some game not letting you play it because of a DRM issue with e-cores. You don't need to worry about making sure you have the latest Windows updates. It's just going to work. It's just going to perform like that i5. And it's on a platform where you'll be able to upgrade it to a 9900X in a few years. And then, well, we need to talk about the assumption that Raptor Lake is going to be as cheap as some people are hoping it will be. Now, I'm not saying Raptor Lake is going to be the worst case scenario for what I'm about to show, but I need to be clear about something here. Recently, DigiTimes leaked that Intel was about to raise pricing on at least their Xeon processors, and I was able to independently confirm recently that that is true as well. I know people being briefed by Intel that they're about to raise pricing across the board for current and next-gen products per tier due to their problems with recent earnings. Intel needs to start making higher margins. I've seen a lot of people online make these odd arguments that AMD has margin issues with Zen 4. Wrong. Intel's had margin issues for years. That's why their stock price is going to shit. And that is why investors are yelling at them at every quarterly, every quarterly call. AMD has had fantastic margins since Zen 2. Zen 4's margins may not be as good as Zen 3 or Zen 2, but they're still good enough. And AMD is ready to go for market share. So don't be so sure Intel has some advantage here in a pricing war. And then in addition to what I confirmed about Xeon pricing... I can now roughly confirm today from some talks with Intel sources that Intel was indeed planning to raise pricing by 5 to 30% depending on the SKU and the Raptor Lake lineup relative to its Alder Lake predecessors. But the funny thing is, is these people aren't that sure anymore. You know, these aren't the decision makers. What they know is that they were planning to raise pricing for Raptor Lake over Alder Lake, but that after seeing, well, the fact that the Vcash models of Zen 4 are coming quarter one, and also seeing that AMD has priced Zen 4 a bit more aggressively than they expected, and it also supposedly, again, like I said, performed a bit better than they expected, they're not sure they can afford to be as greedy is the wrong word, but charge as much for Raptor Lake as they thought they could. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to keep Alder Lake pricing, but that means there really is a range here, and Intel wanted to charge a decent amount more for Raptor Lake if they could have. They just can't now. So let me put that chart back on screen, but with the pricing on there. All right, so you can see the i9-13900K. If it's priced around where the i9-12900K was, I think it's a complete winner. I will recommend it over the competition. But if Intel ends up charging what I know they wanted to charge for that i9, basically charging for it like it's a i9-12900KS successor and then trying to charge like $800 or more on the KS Raptor Lake, then I don't think they have any advantage here. They have a dead platform with worse SSD support that's coming out. And I'll have more updates on this very soon soon but it's coming out a month after zen 4 it is coming a month after zen 4 and it really doesn't have a reason to get it if raptor lake were to cost less it has a reason and the same goes with the entire product stack if the i7 13700k costs the same as a 7900x i don't know why you would get the 13700k it's basically the same performance, but one is all big cores on a better platform and then you go down the product stack to the i5 even the i5 if it's $350, and I'm telling you, I know Intel wanted to charge $350 for that i5. 
they charge 350. They're charging 15% more than the 7600X for no better gaming performance and multi-threading performance that comes with caveats. If you're a gamer, 7600X is the best price performance. It just is if you're only a gamer. And if you want more than that, well, 7700X isn't that much more for the peace of mind of knowing all applications will leverage it perfectly because it only has big cores. And yeah, so besides that, I'm not really sure what else to say about Intel's predicament against Zen 4. I feel like I'm almost becoming repetitive in video after video pointing this out. AMD is launching a month before Raptor Lake. AMD is launching with a platform that has more robust SSD support and will support future generations, whereas Raptor Lake will not. And AMD has the luxury of having roughly the same performance without having to worry about it if an application utilizes eCore as well. Th these generations are going to be very close, but that means as impressive as Raptor Lake sounds like it could be on paper in price performance, if Intel were to mark up prices by even like 20% over what Alder Lake was, I don't think they have a killer generation. It won't be bad, but they don't have a killer generation. And that's not good, though, when you consider they're launching after AMD, and AMD's going to follow up with Zen 4 with Vcash, and, well, then that's it. It's just game over at that point. AMD will win multi-threading, single-threading, and gaming performance, depending on what SKU you choose, and then it's all going to come down to specifically what you're buying the CPU for, but AMD will have the better argument for why you should buy their products, and... Well, I guess this is where I throw in a little leak near the end as well. I don't really feel like Fishhawk Falls is going to impress that much. You know, this was the basically any HEDT and everything but name mainstream workstation platform that Intel it was supposed to launch by the end of this year. This is a monolithic Sapphire Rapids 24 core processor uh, that's all big cores, not some little and big, 24 all big cores. Well, it sounds like it's still in validation based on what I'm told, and that if everything were to go smoothly, it's still unlikely to be out until quarter two, which, based on what I've told you guys already in recent videos, is when Zen 4 Threadripper launches. And so once again, just like Raptor Lake, it's all going to come down to price. If Intel charges, I don't know, below $1,000 for 24 big cores, I think it's cool, but it's going to be launching probably after Zen 4 with Vcash, and so... I don't know, 16 cores with Vcash versus 24 Golden Cove cores? Ah, it's not a good position to be in. And it just, we keep coming back to the fact that Intel needs to get their execution down and launch things on time. And I really wish Raptor Lake would have came out a few months ago. And I wish Fishhawk Falls was coming out this year. But it's not. And that's really all I have to say in this video. But rest assured, I've got a lot more intel updates coming when it comes to release dates and their other upcoming products i'm really excited about but those leaks are gonna have to wait just a little bit longer because they're not quite ready stay tuned to this channel to not miss them which the best thing you could do for that is simply subscribe to the moore's law is dead youtube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss those upcoming leaks and then if you well if you have the extra money consider supporting moore's law is dead on patreon where you'll get early ad free access to the broken silicon podcast the exclusive podcast i drink and the ability to ask us questions we've got a very exciting guest coming up for next week you'll be able to ask this person questions about amd and intel segmentation this is someone who works at one of those companies by the way so this is a very fun episode coming up with perfect timing and uh well besides that thanks for watching <laughs>